Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Charmed Hard with a Vengeance. We watched uh, season one, episode 14, Touched by a Demon. Oh, brother. That's not the show they were referencing, though. <laughs> no, it really wasn't. They're mixing. Uh, they're mixing up their '90s references. Yeah, it was more like Supernatural, the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, in this one, uh, Macy spills some of Marisol's essential oils, escape oils, onto the Wi-Fi router and sets free the main characters from her favorite '90s supernatural drama. Heaven's Vice? Is that what it was called? Yeah, yeah. I wrote it down. Heaven's Vice. Heaven's Vice. Supernatural didn't start in the 90s, right? <laughs> no, I want to say it was early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, it's clearly taking its inspirations from Buffy and Supernatural, or sort of the main ones. They seem to have a little bit of 90210 going on there. Maybe that's just because I've been watching some <laughs> of it. Yeah. Um,. A little bit disappointing, though, I gotta say, in the 90s reference front. Yeah, and I wasn't wild about the presentation of that, because, like, they go into the television show at one point, and, like, there's some points where they're just watching it, and, like, it's in full frame, and it's 4 or 3, like you would expect a 90s show to be. But when mm -hmm. Macy and Harry get sucked into the show during the episode... It's not four or three, and it doesn't really look like they're like they don't do anything to make it look like they're in a '90s show visually, except for one point where Macy swears and a black box goes over her mouth and she gets bleeped, which is like the, broadcast standards. <laughs> yeah, which like that was kind of funny, but I wish they'd done you know more to it and established more of the rules of what they're stuck in because there's one point where macy's like we need to make sure we're in the next scene so they go and like run over to a girl who's about to get sucked into a phone by the devil and like i wish we had seen something else to establish like if they're not in the scene that they're kind of like i don't know they don't know where they are or something like that and, you know like maybe it cut to another scene besides this cafe they're in before this happens and they're like where are we what and they have to like kind of get in there just to establish the rules of this because macy just seems to know this is how it works when it's like why yeah. it doesn't make a lot of sense <laughs> <laughs> i just didn't like there's definitely some strong references to supernatural genre shows from that time mm -hmm. but to be honest a lot of it was not that different than charmed now mm -hmm. like uh for instance okay so we've established at this point that they have been sucked into the television show at first they come into the real world and then they get sucked into there because the uh the main characters throw them in there yeah sam and dean are like we're real now <laughs> we're gonna do some real life moping in a bunker you two go to our shitty 90s world <laughs> <laughs> I do like the supernatural shade. I do like that. Um, but uh, they go there and they end up trapped in hell with Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the master devil. The makeup on him looks fine. It just doesn't look any different than something they would do now. Yeah, they, they made everything look like it, like as if they were doing it on this show, which I mean... I don't know, I guess they are trying to say this was a quality 90s show, I guess, maybe? I don't know. But, I mean, they could have done other things to make it seem of that time, because a lot of the things that they reference saying that it's a 90s thing is not really. Yeah. Like, the most 90s sort of stuff I get from it is some of the fashion. Like, the, the girl is wearing a flower dress over a white t-shirt, mm -hmm. and one of the guys has got, like, a flannel shirt tied around his waist, so those are kind of... Uh, inspired from that time, but the rest of it, like, it could have taken place just in the Charmed universe. Yeah. There wasn't really a lot. Like, they have some stupid stuff they say, too. Like, um, Macy says, woke wasn't a thing yet in the 90s. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> everyone was a misogynist in the 90s because woke wasn't a thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I... I get what they're talking about, but also, like, it just depends on what you're watching. If you're talking about, like, Buffy, mm -hmm. Buffy was, like, the original kind of 
girl power show of that time. That's what Charmed was cribbing off of. Mm -hmm. And Supernatural, I don't know. I mean, you could argue maybe there's some misogynistic elements in there, but I mean, it just... I don't know. It didn't really translate. I did like how disgusted they were with the guys, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time they said something stupid, especially Mel just getting really annoyed at them. <laughs> like she says, even fictional guys are gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get offended because, um, like, one of them says, like, hey, you're pretty good for a girl. Mm -hmm. And Harry's like, for a girl? Mm -hmm. You're talking to a genetic scientist. <laughs> He's all for the girl power. Yeah. <laughs> I like how little fucks Harry gives in this episode. Mm -hmm. Like, when the demon shows up from the show, he's just sitting in a chair reading a newspaper. He doesn't know anything that's going on other than, like, a demon just shows up in front of him. He just kicks him over without even getting up. Yeah, he's like, just like... Eh, lazily. Huh, a vampire. Yeah, he, like, doesn't care. And then... <laughs> Like, I, I guess that's exactly how vampires are, look like in their world, too, or because he immediately IDs it as a vampire. So. Yeah, I wouldn't immediately think that was a vampire, but maybe because he'd seen some of the show when she was watching it, he knew that's what he was looking at. Maybe. No, he just casually says a vampire, though. Not He doesn't say anything about the show right away, so I don't know. No, it was, uh, like, such a nonchalant reaction. And when uh, another thing comes out, like, it's a, a demon and it uh, throws an axe at his head, he does, like, sort of a Matrix dodge and mm -hmm. then gets up, like, no big deal. Yeah. I feel like all the enemies in this, they dust them, too, like Buffy. Yeah, very referential of that. I like, too, when... um. When Harry and Macy end up in the TV show, Macy is just pointing out plot holes on the show. Like, she's just super annoyed with things that they could have done but didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which ends up being how they get out of it because um, because she thought the ending was just really stupid. So she fixes the ending of her show yeah. that, uh, that got her through some tough times when she was a kid. Mm-hmm. When they fix it at the end, and the brothers are like, I guess we'll go back now that our show was fixed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they say, like, it's, we gotta go fulfill our duties. Haha, <laughs> duties. <laughs> 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 and uh, as they're leaving, Macy says, this misogynistic brooding bad boy thing, it's cancelled. <laughs> as they go back to their show, that was cancelled. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's kind of clever they, using the it's, it's this thing is canceled thing for an actual canceled show. They see Clint <laughs> Howard in there. Wow, you guys gotta try this. Oh no! <laughs> wow, you guys gotta try this. He canceled her show, bro. <laughs> If they were throwing the supernatural shade, which clearly there were elements of it there with the two brothers and the demons and the angel elements, they didn't go far enough it was kind of like they didn't want to be too mean about it mm -hmm. because it's on their network so <laughs> yeah it's just, a show that's still going for some reason <laughs> that's still going that just got renewed help us all man i uh. just i wish they played with it a bit more though being on the 90s show and everything like i was thinking of um the actual supernatural episode back when that show was still fun where um mm -hmm. loki um put them in those tv shows stuff yeah they experimented with lots of different genres in that one in that episode for people who don't watch supernatural um they get sucked into the television via the trickster loki so he keeps changing the channels and putting them into different shows and they have lots of different genres and they film them all differently yeah. And uh, clearly Sam and Dean are the uh, contrasting elements. They don't belong in these scenarios, mm -hmm. but the worlds around them are very distinct to what they are. Like they have a, a, a foreign game show or a, a doctor drama or a sitcom with like a laugh track. And yeah. clearly like they they've filmed their hotel set, but in a different way that makes it look like just a one sided sitcom set. Exactly.
But there is nothing distinct about this one. That's the thing that yeah. really bothered me is that like if you didn't if you were just tuning in and you just flipped the channel and you're like, oh, Charmed is on. And then you saw one of the scenes with Macy and Harry. You wouldn't know that they were in a different world than exactly. where they already live. They should have been at least in four or three. And really, there should have been some type of filter to make it look a bit more like a, a 90s show. Yeah. We have our original Charmed lore since... um. The Dean, one of the two Angel brothers, he was named Gideon. Stupid, oh, yeah. sexy Gideon. <laughs> he looks like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> Stupid, sexy Flander. It's like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing, nothing at, at all. all. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> doo, anyway, doo, gotta doo, go doo, run doo, magic doo. school. <laughs> You know, I, I feel like in this case, original Charmed would have done a better job doing a parody of Supernatural or the 90s, because if there's one thing original Charmed loved doing, it was ripping off other things. <laughs> um, and you could tell, like, when Pirates was big and they did a Pirates episode, that's clearly, like, the style that they were going for. It's funny to think that Supernatural is going during original Charmed. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I feel fucking old. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Um, Charmed is way more entertaining than Supernatural at this point. <laughs> Their worst is still better than Supernatural current best. They're a show that's dead and refuses to actually die, though. It's just a zombie of itself. Much it really like the is. character of Nico. Ah, segue. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good segue. Um, so they got they got stuff going on with Nico and Mel and Jada, and they open this episode. Uh, if people recall, the last episode ended with Jada getting hit by an arrow. They just cut, and they're already away from their attackers. Like they're like she's already being bandaged up. They don't show us how they got away or tell us even via line. They're just already escaped. Yeah, that's so ridiculous. Like you don't end it with that big cliffhanger and just be like, anyway, escaped off screen. Who cares? And then it's sort of like a, a background to this whole like TV plot that they're doing. Yeah, it's an intrusion because like. Really, the TV plot, like, that could use more time to flesh it out and make it more of a thing. But instead, you got these two other plots. And Mel and Maggie do get involved with Macy's plot later, since that is kind of the main thing of the episode. But they're doing their own thing for chunks of this. And Mel's just, I don't know, it feels like not much of anything. And it just, like I said, Nico feels like a character who was written off the show and has been dropped back on without any real rhyme or reason to it she's just kind of like i'm here i'm sort of causing minor conflict between her and her new girlfriend but it's not much of a thing it's it seems like they're scared to commit to any conflict mm -hmm. because anything you would think that they would do with this story about like nico being there and jada knows that her girlfriend used to date this woman and they never really officially broke it off. There was a history rewriting spell. Yeah. Um, so you would think that there would be some jealousy there or some hurt there. And I'm glad that she's not just being whiny about it, but she's just like, eh, it's cool. And then they just don't, they give us nothing. Yeah, and there's also, like, so far, as far as Mel's concerned, we haven't seen much conflict in her about this at all. It just seems like she's mostly done with her. Like, unless they do something later, but right now they haven't presented anything like she's conflicted about this. Well, the thing she seems conflicted about, she has more of a beef with the elders over this. Right. Like, she's mad at Charity through this episode because she finds out from Jada that there was a witness protection spell <laughs> that she could have used uh -huh. on Nico instead of history rewriting. Um, but she was never told about this, and she thinks that Charity was keeping this from her because she wanted Nico out of her life, uh, mm -hmm. probably because of her partner and having to cover up for that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And she confronts Harry about this later, and he confirms her suspicions that it's possible that that was a reason, yeah. even though he cares for Charity. So you got that wrinkle? Could have been what she did, dog. Pound it. Harry out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is kind of interesting. It feels almost like this should be the main plot, 
but instead we're focusing on the the episode of the week thing, which is okay by me because this was more interesting than Mel's plot. But it's I may I'm wondering why they're bothering with this is the thing. If they're not committing to anything. Mel's plot is barely anything at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. It just felt like an unwelcome intrusion in the episode, really. It's all unconcluded. Like the last episode, she was going with Jada to meet her parents in what could be considered a character moment because Jada has a problem with her parents. They think that she's in a cult or something. She has a, a, um, a strained relationship with them. And this is a big deal bringing her girlfriend to meet them. Mm-hmm. But they get sidetracked by these witch hunters that show up and they say they're pretending to be her parents or something. But then they never like... Where are her parents? Yeah. We don't meet them. Was this just them, like, calling her and saying, we're going to meet up, but it was the witch hunters? Or, like, it, it just, it's not clear on anything, and we never go back to that. Yeah, well, Jada says, like, there are people who are mad at her for doing some sort of spell to take some money away from some rich asshat or something, and they're mad that they didn't get their inheritance, right? So that's who they yeah. really are. And Like, I feel like, Witch Hunters, that should have been its own episode, really. Like, that should have been yeah. a big deal. If they're like, if they got like spell blocker rings on so they're not affected by magic, this uh-huh. could have been an interesting thing. Yeah. Especially considering, like, this week, um, I do think they use their powers more than normal, but I think in recent episodes, I've kind of forgotten what their powers are because it seemed <laughs> like so inconsequential that, that they could do magic. Yeah. Yeah, it should have been like, you know, or like the, with the cliffhanger at the end of the last episode. That should have been followed up with immediately, you know, just start it with them escaping them for, you know, and make it feel like it was really dangerous. Have that be the whole episode. And then you can do the TV episode as its own thing. Because, like, they make them so inconsequential at, in the end. It's just kind of like um mel and jada hang out with nico for a bit she's like yeah we're gonna do a sting and get these guys and they're like yeah, okay and then they easily thwart them like anyway we'll just freeze time and use some magic like they they use some magic on themselves not on them because they got their anti-magic rings so then they like uh, they create some little doubles or something of them and they shoot their doubles with cr- their crossbows beat them up and then they they're taking their rings off, their anti-magic <laughs> rings, and they get one off, okay, but then the, the girl assassin, they're like, oh, I'm having trouble getting her ring off, quick, use magic on it with me. <laughs> like, wait, it's a, a spell blocker ring, why can you do <laughs> magic on it? What kind of sense does that make? <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> <sighs> quick use magic on the anti-magic item oh the spell that they use it's like a an aging spell like she could put her hands around something and age it and feels like that could be extremely useful and will be forgotten very quickly mm-hmm. um Possibly. it makes no sense that she uses it on there but unless like, she'll like get her to do that sometime and like age someone to death and then it'll yeah. be a big thing turn them into dobby doctor yeah. <laughs> the charmed ones can't decide whether you should live or die. I was joking when we were when we got to the part where the demon comes out of the TV that like it's the Phoebe one. Yeah. <laughs> Time to give you some advice. Yeah. I was kind of wondering though if that was going to happen cuz I wasn't thinking it'd work on the ring cuz she's telling her to do that aging thing. I thought maybe it's going to age the woman and she'd die. <laughs> And then, like, you know, funny. <laughs> yeah, and then Mel would have some conflict near you know, Jada, and Jada, oh, she was evil, couldn't get the ring off, so we had to take care of her kind of deal, which would have yeah. made more sense, too, because, I mean, the ring is supposed to be anti magic. <laughs> I mean, I guess it wouldn't make sense anyway, because she's supposed to be protected by the ring, but oh no, you can't use magic on it. I thought she'd just break her finger or something, like, do something <laughs> slightly shady. Yeah. I feel like both of those plots, like the uh, the witch hunter plot and the TV show plot, could have been episodes on their own and been pretty solid. Like, if you involved everyone with it, 
Mm -hmm. Because everyone's just off doing their own episodes, basically. Like, occasionally they intertwine. Yeah, in the halfway mark, it's like they're all just doing the TV episode because they've already wrapped up the quickly dealt with witch hunters and Maggie's thing is just stupid. (laughs) Well, and Macy's thing also still, even though she's got like a Monster of the Week thing going on, uh, she still has... Um, stuff for the overarching story happening with it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't feel like it's just fluff. Like, she still is the most interesting one. Like, um, she puts her hand on a burner and doesn't realize that her hand is being burned because she is starting to transform into a demon because now that she knows about it, things are going to happen. You know how that works. Like, those those genes lay dormant until you know about them and then (laughs) they start to do stuff. So so this opens up some questions. Demons can't feel anything? (laughs) They become so numb. (laughs) Hey, Maggie. The reason I can't have sex with you is because... I'm basically numb from the neck down. I can't feel yeah. anything. Yeah, I don't feel anything anyway. This isn't even pleasurable to me. Uh, I mean, how would this... How would this be, like, a a good evolutionary step? Like, how, like there are people that actually have disorders like this where their nerve endings don't register pain. And, like, mm-hmm. that's a bad thing. Because you yeah. can injure yourself so quick and not realize you're doing it like Macy did there. So, I, I feel like... Demons are, like, not... Like, they're weaker than people at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because they're, I don't know, bred to fight? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't well, make it, any it's sense. It's stupid, you yeah. know. But uh, luckily for Macy, Galvin is out trekking through Jumanji for her <laughs> off screen. <laughs> I'm sure that's not going to track soon. Like, Has that already not tracked that... Demons don't feel pain. <laughs> oh, sure. I mean, like... I feel like we've sure, seen like, them feel yeah, pain. Yeah, Alistair all. and... Yeah, maybe it's just... It just takes quite a bit to hurt uh-huh. them. I don't know. Maybe. You'd think burning your hand on the stove might work. Especially where Macy isn't even full demon. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Do you think they're going to show us Galvin and Jumanji? Or it's just going to be off screen? I don't know. Maybe that's just this episode. He's out, he's out there with dolphins off screen. <laughs> yeah, he's off galfining it. <laughs> Yo, this is wild. I hope they show it. I really thought, though, like when they're talking about this, that Macy is at least going to go with him, like maybe not on the full trip. I thought she's going to be traveling with him on part way to this thing, like be on a boat or wherever they're going and then he'd go off on his little path or whatever they had to do himself or whatever but i thought she'd be there to help some but nah she's just home baking like "Ah, he's in jumanji yeah she's procrasta baking is that what what uh maggie called it yeah (laughs) and she uh I mean, she can't go with him she had sex with him and then she's gonna watch her uh 90s teen dramas yeah and then when um, Angel Dean comes out of the TV, she'll make eyes at him. Which is yeah, like, they had some eyebrow action going on. Yeah, you're just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> he just had a big thing with Galvin in the last episode. He's off risking his life to help you, and you're going to be making eyes at him? Like, she that doesn't felt seem a little... very distressed at this situation. <laughs> yeah, that felt a little Phoebe-ish. <laughs> and usually Macy's not Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, speaking of uh, Galvin and his grandma, I did get a correction in the comments. They weren't speaking French; they were speaking Creole. Right. So just so people know, they're about speaking that. A, a French-based Creole, though. So that's why it sounds like French. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's similar, but not quite the same thing. But that's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. We also had the plot with uh, Maggie and Parker, which is the dumbest one. The dumbest one. Super vagina beams! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking vagina light? Excuse me? It's a beam because sh- it shoots Parker. <laughs> Excuse me? 
did we see in the year 2019 a scene from Charmed of Maggie having sex or trying to have sex with Parker Mm -hmm. and a light emits from her vagina and throws Mm -hmm. him into the wall. This happened, right? The weirdest part was like, as the light is shining, then E.T. silhouette comes into the light. (laughs) I'll be right here, Maggie. (laughs) When she... When she finally stops being afraid and lets Parker in, she tractor beams him into her vagina. (laughs) (laughs) Come into the light. (laughs) No. It's no moon. That's a vagina. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Maggie. (laughs) I I totally get it. When I'm afraid, sometimes a demon light comes out of my penis. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she literally had a flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I want to name the episode this, but I can't. YouTube's going to flag it. I can't call it flashlight. <laughs> uh, someone pointed out something too I didn't think about last week. Yeah. Um the whole thing with Maggie and Parker getting back together, like they completely forgot about Lucy's sleeper agent. Yeah, I was going to mention that, too. I was like, what? <laughs> I, Alistair's like, haha, make sure Parker and Maggie get back together. And then she had nothing to do with it. They're just back together now, so... <laughs> yeah, like, that completely was just dropped. Uh-huh. And now they're up to, like, trying to have sex stage, and then that mm-hmm. happens. Like, this was a lot to take in all at once. Yeah. Which is, like, their whole plot. It's all they do. And, like, then Maggie comes <laughs> home and gets involved with the TV plot and watches them on TV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so the reason she has the vagina light is because subconsciously she was scared about what might happen if they take it to the next level and him being half demon. Mm-hmm. Is this part of her uh, empathy powers or this is just a witch thing, the, the vagina light? Uh, I have many questions about this. <laughs> I think it's just a stupid Maggie thing. <laughs> <laughs> Original Charmed would not do something like this. This was too stupid, even for Original Charmed. I think this is the dumbest thing we've ever seen on this show. Vagina light. Would have been on one of the uh, crappy trailers for Charmed. I have a light, my vagina! (laughs) Charmed! They didn't have to do it this way, like literally from her vagina. I cannot stress enough for people who are just listening to this and not watching the show, her vagina lights up like a fucking glow worm (laughs) (laughs) underneath her, like she's made a tent out of her body and and, and underneath there's a a flashlight. I think Parker's dick would be the glow worm. Her, her vaginas become like an angler fish where they got those little balls on the front and it, the light brings uh, unsuspecting men in and then um, vagina of dentata or whatever. <laughs> Siren call coming from her vagina. <laughs> Walking on sunshine. Ooh, I gotta... I gotta go to the vagina. It's so bright. <laughs> Vagina Illuminata. (laughs) (laughs) We didn't get a lot from Parker in this episode, but I still feel like they're trying to put a bit more life into this guy. I didn't have anything to be mad at with him because, like, I was too distracted by the uh, vagina. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, um, yeah, it does seem like there's some retooling going on, and uh, I'd have to wait and see, like, what direction they're going, but... Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm not annoyed with him, so okay. Mm-hmm. They have another bizarre scene with them at the end yeah. uh, when they're having sex and they have like all the, the romantic lighting and fades and and it's a beautiful moment. And, uh, yeah. and then they just smoke through the floor mm-hmm. into hell or something. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> then there's an evil woman with a crow. 
Yeah, and she goes, it's about time. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Went back in time. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, back in time to the 90s. Oh, they're on another TV show. Kind of looked like they were on Stargate for a second because there's like the stone <laughs> thing lighting up from the stone. Yeah, their 90s take was better than their 80s take, I thought, but it just didn't go far enough. Mm -hmm. It was really confusing, too, like this whole their TV show world is another dimension. Like, he's just acting like it's, it is a dimension that makes sense. Like, oh, their world's coming into ours. Like, their world isn't real, though. Like, how's that? The work? TV world. The TV world's yeah. coming into the real world. <laughs> and then we won't be woke anymore. Yeah. <laughs> One of, like, the, the dilemmas in this, too, of the TV plot was, you know, if the show ends before they get out, then they're stuck there, I guess. But it's just like, okay, why, well, why can't they, they, they've already been talking to Maggie because they assume she's watching, which she luckily was by the time they start yelling at it, hoping that Maggie's watching it. But they could uh, say, hey, um take the, the timeline and like click back to the beginning of the episode or even the beginning of the season. Give us some more time because it's not live. They don't play the fa with the fact that this is a TV show. Uh -huh. Like they could be like, okay, pause it until we can figure out what to do or, you know, because this is streaming. It's not like this is live. Mm -hmm. the, oh no, once this ends, then that means we're stuck here forever. Like you're watching it in streaming. Well, that should have happened, actually. Like, before Maggie realized that they were in there, she should have accidentally bumped it and, like, sent it back, and then they get really confused about what's going on. They should pause it, and then everyone else is frozen but them. Yeah. That'd be kind of fun. Or, like, she accidentally puts the subtitles on or changes it to Spanish <laughs> yeah. or, you know, something. <laughs> yeah. Or they play with the coloring on it or, you know, mm -hmm. glitches from streaming yeah buffering <laughs> yeah oh no the world's buffering that spot us some time <laughs> oh no this there's a music replacement here <laughs> <laughs> all right phelan i think it's time for the fashion segment <laughs> i just got two characters this time around uh i'm gonna give a shout out to mel here she had a sparkly turtleneck with a cape on <laughs> very bold to be wearing a cape Maggie, as usual, uh, has some good looks. Uh, pink velvet dress, a fuzzy maroon jacket, a leopard print shirt with snakeskin boots, and a off-the-shoulder sporty shirt with a plaid skirt. Mm. So I thought those were, those were my favorite looks this week. <laughs> what were your favorite looks, Phelan? Uh, the, the white jumpsuit of the one angel boy. That was something... That did remind me a bit of, like, the show Teen Angel mm -hmm. that they had on ABC where the kid eats a spoiled hamburger and then dies and becomes his friend's guardian angel. <laughs> <laughs> he would wear outfits like that. So mm -hmm. I guess that was a bit 90s looking. Oh, yeah, I thought that was, was another thing that worked. All right. <laughs> I don't think that was great casting with the guy that wore the white, though. He didn't seem like one of those types. Like the, the broody, young, handsome guy. He wasn't ugly, but he just seemed like a like a dad or something to me. <laughs> <laughs> he was the sensitive one. He wasn't the broody one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Phelan, overall, uh, what'd you think of this episode? Uh, kind of missed the mark a bit. <laughs> it, it had a few things that were funny. And the supernatural parody is kind of funny, but I just wish it could have gone a bit further and stopped being derailed by the other plots in the episode. I don't feel like it ever got fully fleshed out on, like, a stupid Maggie's flashlight. <laughs> the, I mean, that is the dumbest thing that they have ever done on the show. I am baffled. That it, it feels like this didn't really happen. How did this happen? Um, <laughs> but the rest of the episode, like, it was kind of, it was okay. I like the concept a lot more than the execution. Yeah. Like, it, I wish that they had done more with it, because this is a really funny idea. It just didn't feel like it was completely committed to it. Mm -hmm. 
But the fact that they were focusing on Maisie most of the time, I think, was in its favor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, so that's it for this week. Uh, next week, it's going to be uh, Switches and Stones. That means something. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So uh, if you guys like the podcast, it'd be great if you could leave a comment uh, or subscribe or talk about it on Twitter. Hashtag Charmed Heart with a Vengeance. Hashtag uh, Galfin. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Woke is a Joke. Yeah, that's good. Woke is a Joke. <laughs> uh, we'll see you Charmanders next time. Bye.